Now we look at the Ender 3. The Ender 3 is an aluminum extrusion Cartesian style 3D printer from Creality 3D, a Far East company in China. It has a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build volume, an aluminum heated bed with an adhesive sheet on top, an MK8 style extruder with a Bowden setup, it has a 24 volt power supply and power loss recovery enabled by the SD card. Now the Ender 3 is a pretty cost effective 3D printer and it's completely open source. The assembly process is pretty straightforward and it should only take about an hour if everything goes correctly. Power loss recovery seems to work pretty well for the most part. Mechanically speaking, it's a pretty quiet machine and it has an LCD full graphics display. And right out of the box, I have to say, it turns out a decent 3D print. I really like the oversized bed knobs they used on this one and its compact form factor. You have the screen over here and then you have the control box with everything contained inside it, right on the extrusion. And the power supply just kind of hangs out back here out of the way and you're completely protected by a plastic plate. You do only have a single Z motor and a single lead screw on this printer, but with something this size with this build volume, that shouldn't cause you any issues. And on a side note, this build sheet that they use on top of this bed seems to be indestructible and it sticks to prints really well. Now there were a few things that caused me some pain on this machine during testing, starting with the Z-Rod bracket. This steel bracket right here was bent about 10 degrees up and it was causing the Z-Nut to bind. So the lead screw was kind of tilted this way and it wouldn't go up or down. Walter and I did build these on a live stream side by side and with a little bit of encouragement I was able to correct that bracket enough and loosen up the Z-Nut that I got out of first print. But later I went back and took that bracket off and put it in the vise and got it a perfect 90 degrees and that solved the issue from there. The next thing I saw was an issue that's been reported many times and that's the Bowden tube coupler on the extruder side lets the tube loose while you're printing. And when that happens, the printer just starts kicking out filament and throwing it all over the floor. Frustrating? Indeed. So I did go ahead and replace both the couplers, the one on the extruder and on the hot end, with ones I found on Amazon. And I printed out a 3D clip to make this one on top just a little bit tighter. But I'm still not happy with these couplers. There's better alternatives out there, I just can't seem to find any to purchase. So if you know of some, let me know in the comments. The biggest pain point that I found on this printer is the extruder. The printer seemed to print just fine out of the box, but then I started to notice some under extrusion. And the spring isn't near tight enough to hold the idler up against the extruder gear. The filament would just slip by and the extruder gear wouldn't grip it at all. You can see it on this Triceratops skull. It's really intermittent, so any inconsistency at all in the filament would cause this under extrusion. And it's even worse than the infill. It's just kind of crunchy all over. So I pulled the extruder apart and I stretched out the spring but that caused the extruder to skip. So I upped the voltage on the motor and that did help some, but it was still skipping during the faster movements. So I got into the slicer and I slowed down the infill speed and that helped, but it's still a headache and it's one of the first things that I would upgrade on this 3D printer. I also ran into another strange issue and that's sometimes when you're printing, the power supply will let out this really high pitched noise and it's really uncomfortable to be around when it's doing that. Hopefully, I'm the only one that experienced that issue. As always, these are only issues that I saw on my Ender 3, and I'm sure that they've been corrected in other iterations. Now, let's take a look under the covers. So, it's pretty much your standard Melzi board that Creality likes to use. It has the 128 processor, and there's not a lot of memory available on it. Also, there's no bootloader installed, so if you want to upgrade firmware, keep that in mind. Being open source, the firmware is available for download. And then pretty much like every other Creality machine, you have your metal fan shroud for your hot end fan and your slim mount part cooling fan. You do have pretty much the same hot end they use on everything where the Bowden tube goes all the way to the nozzle. So that's the nuts and bolts of this thing, but how's it print? Let's take a look at some. This is one of the first prints I did right out of the box. And as I was saying before, it did start out printing really well. Although there is some Z inconsistency for this type of printer, it looks pretty good all in all. You can still see a little bit of inaccuracy on this model, but it really came out pretty well. Same thing here with the T-Rex skull. You can see where it kind of got wobbly on the higher parts, but not too bad. 
And I don't care what the quality of this model looks like, it's just awesome. We're going to need a bigger benchy. The Ender 3 is extremely affordable. At around $180 US, if you wanted to give 3D printing a try, you don't have a lot to lose here. In fact, I would go as far to say that this is probably the biggest bang for the buck 3D printer kit of all time. With that said, it's not going to give you a completely reliable and flawless 3D printer right out of the box. I've had a lot of failures. But given that this is open source, it's going to be the ultimate base for hacking and tweaking. With just a few low-cost add-on parts, your experience and print quality is going to improve greatly. Now, I'm not going to tell you to run right out and buy this 3D printer as your go-to machine, but it could definitely be made your go-to machine with minimal cost and effort. I have not been in contact with Creality on this 3D printer. It was bought with my own funds, and all opinions expressed are my own. If you liked this video or you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. And power off. Power on. Would you like to resume? Yes. And my Benchy is saved. Yes.